First thing you should be able to do is you should be able to count up the notes uh, the correct way. So we're going to start at C today. And uh, if you go up the neck from C, I'm just going to play it here for now because it's the easiest one to visualize because it's low on the guitar here on the first fret, second string. What we're going to do is we're going to go from C to D, and that's going to be a whole step. People are like, what's in between? It's a C sharp or a D flat. We'll get to that later. So right now we have the whole step from C to D. That's two frets. From D to E, we have a whole step again. So far we have C, D, E. F is going to be only a half step away. This is where people get a little bit confused. But think of E and F as being stuck together, okay? Just for now, just an easy way to visualize this. So E and F, neighbors. Okay, now, when, now we're on F, we're going to go to G. That's a whole step, so two frets. A is going to be a whole step from there. Remember, the musical alphabet starts over. It does not go to H. It goes back to A. So from G to A is a whole step. From A to B is going to be a whole step. Notice we're at the double dots here. And then to get home to C again, we've gone full circle here. We're going to go to the C here, half step above B. So the B and the C are also stuck together. So what two sets of notes are stuck together? We have E and F and B and C. Everything else is going to be a whole step apart. So one more time, we start at C here. Remember, we're on the second string, which is the B string, first fret, which is C. Go up a whole step to D, whole step to E, half step to F, whole step to G, whole step to A, whole step to B, half step to C. So you just played a C major scale right there uh, in naming those notes. Okay, so that's the first place to start. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the real exercise. All you need to do, it's a pretty simple concept, but if you build upon it over time, it's kind of like a momentum, like a snowball effect. And pretty soon, uh, within a few weeks, you're going to know the entire neck in a very cool way. So let's do this. Let's go to the sixth string, the big fat string. We're going to find the C note on that string. And just to save you time, you know, you could count it up and I actually recommend you do that so that you could practice counting up the notes like we were doing. I'm just going to tell you today it's on the eighth fret. So let's go to the eighth fret. Let's count up. We have the third fret marker, fifth fret marker, seventh fret marker. So here's the eighth fret. So we have the sixth string eighth fret. That's C. Now all you have to do is find C on every string. So you should know the names of your strings, by the way. E, A, D, G, B, E. Remember, Eddie ate dynamite, goodbye Eddie. That's the classic. People have come up with other ways of remembering it, but uh, that way seems to work for a lot of people. Okay, so now we're on the A string. We're going to go to the B note, which is a whole step above the open string. So that's going to be the second fret. And then remember, B and C are stuck next to each other. So we have B to C. C is going to be the third fret. There you go. You found the C on the A string. Okay, so here's what we have. On the sixth string, we play C on the eighth fret. When we go to the fifth string, the next string, we're going to play C on the third fret. Same note. C, C. Now all you have to do is go through the rest of the strings. I have good news, though. The first string and the sixth string are both E strings. So what's cool is you already know where that is on that string. So essentially, we only have a few strings left to find. So let's go to the fourth string now, which is the D string. And that one takes a while to count up. So I'm just going to tell you, right? It's the tenth fret. There's your other C. All right, so, so far, let's start over. On the sixth string, we go to the eighth fret to play C. On the fifth string, we go to the third fret for C. And on the fourth string, we go to the tenth fret for C. So it's kind of fun just to do that. C, C, C. All right, just two more strings. So let's go to the third string now, which is G. If you count up, remember, you eventually you can do this really fast and instantly, but G, A, full step, full step to B, half step to C. See how much quicker you can get by doing that? It's going to be great. So on the third string, the C note is found on the fifth fret. So I'll go through all of them again. We have 8th fret, 3rd fret, 10th fret, 5th fret. Let's go to the 2nd string. The C note's going to be found on the 1st fret. Like we did when we first uh, started learning how to count up the notes. That's where we started. And then, like I said, on the 1st string, 8th fret is C. Just like on the 6th string. So now the fun begins. Once you're able to locate the C note on every single string, 
All you need to do is make a game out of it. So at first, maybe you might just do it free because it's going to take you a while to find each one again. So you're like C, and then you're like, where's the next C? Uh, a, B, C. Okay, there's the next one. might take you a while. But when you want to get faster and better at it, there's a way of kind of pressuring yourself into learning quicker, and that's just to use a metronome. So set the metronome to a really slow click, and then tell yourself after four clicks, you have to hit the next C. What that does is at first you might fail quite a bit and you have to slow it down even more, but eventually your brain just starts to get quicker because it has to, and you'll be able to find those C notes everywhere you go. Now that's only the first round. We're gonna do two rounds today, so we're gonna choose another note, but uh, I want you to give this first round a lot of time because here's the advantage of it. Let's say somebody wants you to play a D note somewhere. Once you know where all the C notes are, which is the whole reason for this first exercise, you're gonna be able to reference that to find the D note. So D is always going to be a whole step higher than C, so two frets away. So let's say you're on the skinniest string, first string, and you know where C is. But you're trying to find D. It's going to be very simple. You just go up two frets, there's D. If somebody wants you to find a B note, it's going to be easy. Because you already know where C is, B is going to be a half step behind it. Remember, B and C are stuck together. B, C. See how you can use that as a reference point now? So when we add the next note, which we're gonna do now, but like I said, don't do it until you're very comfortable with just the C notes, uh, you're gonna have two points of reference and uh, it's really gonna make things a lot easier. So we're gonna use G as our note now. And I'm going around the circle of fifths. If you guys know what that is, great. If not, we talk about it on the website, theartofguitar.com, check it out there. So what we're gonna do now is find G on every string. So let's start on the sixth string. Since that's open E, we're going to go F is the first fret, G is the third fret. And by the way, counting up to find these notes is going to help you also in learning the neck. It's just sort of a, a byproduct of what we're doing. All right, so we have G is right there, third fret. Then you're going to go to the next string, you're going to find G. I'm going to do it quickly today, but you guys just do it, take your time, all right? G, third string open is G. Second string, eighth fret's G. And the first string, we go back to the third fret, G. So let's say you went through and learned where all the C's are, where all the G's are. Now, whatever chord or note you want to find is going to be simple, because one of them is going to be near one of those uh, reference points. So let's say somebody says A. They want you to find an A note. Okay, if I'm on the sixth string, I know where both the C notes and the G notes are. I'll go to the one that's closer to A. Let's go to G. To find A, you just go up two frets or a whole step, and boom, there's an A. Let's just randomly play, pick a string. Let's go to the second string. If you know where G is, which you will over time, A is very simple. It's two frets above right here. Now if somebody says find a D note on that same string, okay, I already know where C is, so I just go two frets above that, there's D. Where's E? It's two frets above that. You just keep referencing off these pegs that you've already laid out. So this exercise can be very, very powerful and you can learn a lot in a short amount of time. And uh, you just have to lay down the foundation in a very strong way. So don't skip around and go, oh, I kind of know the C, you know, let's move on to G. Really get the C down. It's worth putting time into that. And then learn where all the Gs are. And then leave me a comment and let me know how easy it is now to find any note on the fretboard for you. I'm excited to hear about it. So, all right, guys, we'll catch you later, either at a live stream or a future lesson, okay? See you there. Bye.